It was a fun Friday night one week ago with a stingy Sooner defense posting six takeaways of Temple and an opportunistic offense converting every one of them into points. Oklahoma fans were the only ones with anything to hoot about after a 51 to 3 win over the Owls. From inside Gaylord Family Oklahoma Memorial Stadium at Sooner Game Day presented by Taco Mayo Big Appetite, bigger savings. Download and save today. So Saturday at 645 on SEC Network. It's the fifth ever meeting between the Sooners and the Houston Cougars. They were both in the Big 12 last season, but they didn't play each other like two ships that passed in the night. As we continue to celebrate the 100 year anniversary of the Palace on the Prairie, we are inside the studios in the bowels of Gaylord Family Oklahoma Memorial Stadium. And you know my broadcast partners, the Butkus and Benaric Award winning linebacker, national champion at Oklahoma, Teddy Lehman, and the Werfel Trophy winner, Academic All American of the Year and All-American center Gabe Eichert, and I'm Chad McKee, your, uh, your gracious host here this week. So you 51 are gracious. To three. Well, I try to be. You know, That's I, a great word for you. I just find life's easier that way, Gabe. I really do. 51-3. to three. Ted, when I asked you what would please you most last week, you said a shutout by the defense. You didn't get it, but what did you think overall of the win? I, I thought it was pretty good, all things considered. You know, a little banged up on the offensive line, and, you know, your young quarterback, I thought, went out and performed pretty well. Uh, you got some of your stars involved. We were wondering who those were going to be. Bauer Sharp looked really good. Deion Burks looked good. Some of the backs did some nice things. And on the defensive side, I thought the, the defensive line really shined. I thought that they, they changed the line of scrimmage, lived in the backfield, were a big part of the forced turnovers, six turnovers, uh, five of those on defense, really impressive. All in all, pretty good win in week one. Okay, so Gabe, 40 new scholarship players. You are going to say something. There. Yeah, I was just going to say, who shined more, the defensive line or Teddy with this lighting? I mean, my <laughs> goodness, he's glowing. He's effervescent. Beautiful. Yeah, he does. He looks great. And, and the jacket, as always. I almost wore that same thing. Kind of glad that I didn't. That would have been very awkward. I would have enjoyed that very much. Yeah, I know you would have. Uh, 40 new scholarship players. Remember, seven new starters on offense, most of them there on the offensive line. They were one for 12 on third down. Not super excited about that. So Nick nitpick things a little bit. Well, Gabe. nitpicking is what we do best. That's right. And <laughs> clearly, third down, it just was not good enough. And, and the guys on that offense and Seth Luttrell and Joe John Finley will be the first ones to tell you that. And some of the third down issues – were a result of not being efficient on first and second down, mm -hmm. where you're in third and long situations and you are just not in an advantageous down and distance, the run game's got to get going. There was not a ton of movement created at the point of attack, and the offensive line is just a banged-up group. That group needs to get healthy. They need to start developing more of a rhythm in the run game. I think we'll see – the play calling expand in the run game. Seth Luttrell did not go to much with the rushing attack. I think we'll see a little more. I think we'll see the, the personnel groupings expand as, as well in this Houston game. But, yeah, you, you've got to be more efficient on first and second down. Put yourself in better third down situations. I, I think what you're saying, one thing you're alluding to is there, want to see more big plays explosive 20 plus yard type of plays am I right about that it, nothing makes offense easier <laughs> right. than explosive plays right having a lot of explosive plays in the passing game and in the rushing attack can alleviate a lot of problems you have offensively other than the deep ball to Farouk on the second play of the game we just really didn't see a lot of things in the passing game down the field so Hopefully Jackson Arnold and this wide receiver core will continue to develop some chemistry. Hopefully Jackson Arnold learns to trust the offensive line a little more. Hopefully the offensive line player at a higher level. It, it all goes, but it, it all comes back to that running game for me. If you're not running it efficiently, then teams don't have to commit more to the box. And running it efficiently is really what opens up things in the deep passing game. So we'll, we'll see if that comes against the Cougars. Now, defensively, five turnovers forced, one on special teams there, the, the Canuck return for touchdown, but six turnovers, most in a game by a Sooner defense since 2003. You love a, it, it's essentially a defensive score when you pick up a punt and take it to the house, Teddy, but how do you keep that rolling on the defensive side? Uh, just continue to dominate the line of scrimmage. I mean, that's where it all starts. Um, and it'll be, it was the same against Temple. It'll be the same when we get into conference play. If you can win the line of scrimmage, you're going to give yourself a really good chance. So 
you know, I, we had a, a pretty limited game plan in week one. I wouldn't expect that we're going to break out all of the exotic blitzes and everything in week two, but I bet there's going to be some a, a couple of change-ups in, in what we do, maybe bring a couple of different pressures, but I think that's what you're going to see. Uh, whether it's this week, as moving to conference play, we're going to be in attack defense. We're going to put the pressure on offenses. So a quick snapshot of the Cougars 4-8 and eight last year. Dana Holgerson fired as head coach in that final season in the Big 12. They lose 27-7 to UNLV. In comes Willie Fritz. And, and Sooner fans, the Sooner program, are familiar with Willie Fritz from his days at Temple, where he was very good two times American Athletic Conference Coach of the Year. It'll actually be the third time in 40 years that Oklahoma has faced Willie Fritz. That way too close for comfort game was yeah. a final of 40 to 35. That was a seat squirmer here at the Palace way on the Prairie. Way too good of a football game for my liking. Exactly. Fans may have enjoyed it, but it was it was tough. Oh, oh no, not, not the OU fans. <laughs> the OU fans did not enjoy it. Fan, <laughs> College football fans yes, correct. enjoyed That's right. that, okay? Yes. Donovan Smith, former Texas Tech quarterback, he's their guy. But 36 transfers, that's the second most of any Power 5 program. Would you say this uh, about this program, Houston? Probably better get them while you can, Gabe. Is that kind of accurate? That That's how it feels to me. Willie Fritz is one heck of a football coach. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not betting against him getting that thing rolling down there at Houston, especially with all the resources they've got. But when you look at this team, I, I thought the defense was clearly the strength of the team against the against UNLV. UNLV does a lot of unique things offensively, and, and I thought that the Cougars held up. They only gave up 20 to what is a high-powered UNLV offense because that, I mean, the offense, Houston's offense gave up a pick six in this game. That's how UNLV got to 27. UNLV's offensive line was... The, the nicest way I can put it is very, very bad. I mean, that's <laughs> that, being no, almost minute. complimentary. Is that a backhanded compliment? <laughs> no, I, I mean, that's, that's as nice as I can be about it. If they play the way that they played against UNLV, Oklahoma's defense, like Houston is not going to score. Mm -hmm. it, it was that bad. So we'll see if they've corrected some of those mistakes they had up front, Ted. Yeah, and, you know, for the future, I just – Willie Fritz, we know he's a really good coach. They're in a big conference now, uh, Power Four conference. They're in a good place. There's recruits all throughout Houston. We know that. It's about resources. If they're going to be able to pile up the resources, then I think this program is going to be going places pretty quickly. Oklahoma defense with the takeaways. Remember, the Sooners were second nationally in takeaways a season ago. They have picked up where they left off. Plus six in turnover margin after week one. No other team in the country was better than plus three. So you keep that up. You're going to lead the country in turnover margin, but given what we saw a season ago, you I don't You keep think that up, we're winning a national title. <laughs> That's right. There's six just no a other, game, we'll be okay. Six a game, I think Plus we're winning Plus six per all. game would be just fine. And the offense did its part. It was a dazzling debut for the Purdue transfer, Deion Burks. Six catches, three of them for pay dirt. Mistake-free football from Jackson Arnold in his home debut. A look back at the Oklahoma offense next on Sooner Game Day, presented by Taco Mike. Sooner Game Day presented by Taco Mayo, Oklahoma and Houston at 645 Saturday night on SEC Network. Sooners get a, an extra day of prep after playing on Friday night here the previous week. All signs were people were, were pretty pleased with the Friday night football game here at the Palace on the Prairie. It was cool and got to see Jackson Arnold make his home debut. Clean, number one. No turnovers for the Sooner quarterback. Did complete four touchdown passes. He was efficient on offense. What did you think, Gabe, and, and what's kind of that next step that you'd like to see him take in week two? I, I thought he was solid. Uh, I liked what I saw from him in, in the passing attack. Also liked what I saw from him as a runner. Now, maybe he could get down a little <laughs> bit and, and not finish some of the runs the way that he did. But I do think it's important that they showed he's a threat to run the football yeah. early. Now, that is something that every team they're going to play sees on tape and they're going to have to prepare for it. But when it comes to where the improvement can come, I just think his decision making, I thought it was good. I just think it can speed up mm -hmm. a little bit. I, I think his processing is going to continue to get quicker. And I would like to see him trust the pocket a little more in some of those third down situations where some of these deeper routes have to develop down the field past the first down marker. Now, offensive line he's got to they have to earn that trust 
right? But that is that's about it. I thought I thought eleven was really solid in this debut. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, every point that you said, I agree with. One of the things that I'd add is I feel like he's almost playing too cautious. Like this is the time of the season where. As a young guy, maybe you see what you can get away with and what you can. Uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna try and force some balls and make some plays, I'd rather it happen now than later, and you don't have really any experience to go on. That was just his second start. You know, the bowl game. I feel like there's some P PTSD there from that game with the turnovers and everyone talking about it all off season. That's all the cycle was: the turnovers, the turnovers. And yes, I want him to take care of the football. We all do. But we also want to see his playmaking ability, and I think that's what makes him a really good quarterback. The athleticism, the arm talent, all top notch. He just got to cut it loose a little bit. And you mentioned the debuts we saw from uh, Bauer Sharp at the tight end spot. Looks really good. But in particular, Deion Burks, three touchdown receptions in his debut. I, I hate to say, is he the next Oklahoma wide receiver superstar? Yes. But, <laughs> I mean, he looks say like it, a pro. Yes. He looks like a pro playing at the collegiate level. He really does. In particular, there in the slot, he's so physical, you know, for his size, Gabe. He, he looks like he's a next-level type of player. Get the man the football. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and however you want to get it to him, hand it to him, throw it to him, snap it to him, I don't care. Get the man the <laughs> football. Snap it to him. I, like I think he is I, – I think he's the most dynamic player that we've got on this football team. And – I think you treat him like a true wide receiver one in the National Football League. 12 to 15 targets and touches. Get him the ball in a variety of ways. You're right, Chad, he's a very physical player. I liked what I saw from him as a blocker out on the perimeter as well. We didn't get to see him stretch the field maybe as much as we wanted to, but I think with the injury to Jalil Farouk, we're gonna see Seth Luttrell move beyond for He's going to play in the slot, and now he's going to play outside. And when you get in that outside spot, you can get a few more one-on-one -on -one matchups where you're running deep routes down the field. Uh, I'm, expecting, I'm expecting the ball to go six his way a lot. Well, I, I don't know. It, I'm sure we've had guys, but I can't think of anyone that we've had that's as versatile as he is. I mean, we've had some smaller slot guys that can do some stuff, but they're your, kind of your typical slot receivers, mm -hmm. smaller, mm -hmm. uh, more agile. But he has a build to him where I don't, you're not worried about handing him the football. Gabe said snap it to him. I totally agree. I think you can do all kinds of different stuff. He's an offensive coordinator's dream because you could just start drawing stuff up and find different ways to get him the football. You know, he, he squats like 700 pounds, Gabe. Did that inspire you to buy your new quad machine for, for leg don't training lie, so you, you know can get in was. that same ball I game? Saw Bur in. I saw Burks' quads, and I was like, man, I've really fallen off. <laughs> I need to get these things back. You always wanted to play with the pants rolled up above the kneecaps, no, right? No, it Show was – I, I, maybe if my quads looked like Deion Burks, <laughs> okay. I would have done that. We're going to give you a little time This is a lot that. of Burks quad content. Yeah, yeah that's, it's, it's plenty, I think. Just the, impressive. Just the right him out. It's impressive. Wide receiver, you do begin to get a little bit concerned. Jalil Farouk, broken foot. He's out six to eight weeks. The Jaden Gibson injury in the preseason. Should get Nick Anderson back. He didn't play in week number one. But now you've added Burks and you've added receptions from the tight end, Ted. But but are you a little concerned about the thinness of that wide receiver room? That's a new thing to say, by the way, the room. Yeah. Not the position group. Now it's the room, the wide receiver room. Concerned? Yes. Um, you know, Nick Anderson, expect him back. It could play probably at any moment if they absolutely had to have him. But let's be honest, there's a little bit of a history there. Brennan Thompson, same thing, a little bit of an injury history there for Rook. Going to miss him for six to eight. And I, I don't know what what to expect whenever you get him back. Uh, if you get him back in six weeks, what, what percentage is he going to actually be? So we're thin there. Uh, so, yeah, concerned, but also some excitement because – Somebody's going to have to step up, whether it's a young guy, whether it's a vet that hasn't had a whole lot of opportunities. This is where you can find those diamonds in the rough. And, you know, for the young guys getting their first opportunities, this is exciting stuff because you're going to go out there because they need to find depth. They're going to give you plenty of opportunities. So who knows what we're going to find? Gabe, you mentioned with the offensive line a moment ago, they got to get fully healthy before you really know what you have. So when you say, yes, room for improvement on the offensive line, do you have to take that caveat to it 
in that not everybody is 100% as they try to put this thing together. Yeah, you certainly have to factor it in, but no one cares. Yeah. No one's going to feel <laughs> bad for Oklahoma. All these teams have guys banged up at whatever position. But, yes, it would be awfully nice if Bill Beanbow could get all of his guys healthy enough to put them out there on the field. And Brent Venable said that Jake Taylor is available this week. We'll see what that means. Is he, hey, he can go out there and start available, or is he, we'll put him in if something goes wrong, <laughs> available. You're really banged up at the center spot, but the bottom line is whoever is out there on the field, you have to perform. Yep. You have to execute. You have to go out there and do your job, and the offensive line did not do their job at a high enough level mm -hmm. last week. I can only imagine what that film session was like and what practice has been like for them this week, but they need to continue to work to get as healthy as possible, and whoever's out there, got to block guys. I mean, it's that simple. I mentioned the run game a moment ago. Uh, Taylor Tatum flashed. He had the most explosive run by any running back all night. Javante Barnes, good to see him healthy and back out there. I think th the idea of having a mobile running quarterback is new. And, and as you said earlier, Gabe, that was pretty non-existent the last couple of years. The ability to run at the quarterback position, Teddy. And, and in fact, he had more carries than any running back had in the game on Friday night. So overall, what did you think of the run game? I thought it was okay. Um, I, I thought we should have been more dominant on the line of scrimmage than we were against Temple. Um, you know, I thought the quarterback run game did act, add an extra element. I don't know how much they want to get into that. I heard Coach Latrell talking about it, like maybe not that many uh, reps from the quarterback, but I, I Tatum flashed. You mentioned it, Chad. I'll be honest, he looked the best to me out of the group. Now it's just one game, and it's hard to know, like. What were, what were the guys they were going up against? You know, Barnes, I thought, looked really good. Franklin had the nice run. I thought our backs were solid. Uh, I'm going to be interested to see if we bring some new concepts this week. Maybe try and tack the perimeter of these defenses a little bit, at least until we sort out whatever we've got to do on the offensive line and we get healthy there. We may see a little bit more creativity. Oklahoma had the SEC Special Teams Player of the Week this week. Three for three field goals, six for six on PATs. I know, Ted, you're a just do your job as far as a kicker is concerned, but but your thoughts on having a kicker and some depth at both kicker and punter. Ted, your thoughts? Gabe? Well, I I thought it was great. Line up and kick a 50 yard of your first kick uh, at Oklahoma. Impressive. I thought he was sharp. But let's be honest. Uh -oh. Nobody cares at kicker. It's all about your last kick. Right? If you make your last kick, you're great. If you're 30 of 30 and walk out there and miss a game winner, nobody cares that you were 30 for 30. So you just got to keep making them. It's a tough position. It looked great in game one. Hopefully it continues. But, you know, we're going to have to see some in some big situations. I say congratulations to Tyler Keltner. It well doesn't, done. Doesn't, not not well on done. player of the week, but that was a compliment from Teddy Lehman for a kicker, Gabe, <laughs> I think. I, I think that's what just happened. <laughs> Did it? I... <laughs> This is my philosophy on this. I am not a superstitious person at all. Kicker's doing great. I don't want to talk about it. I'm going to leave him alone. Exactly. Fact. Kickers and we are will... a rare breed. Yeah. No, I'm not talking about it. We will move on to the defense Fine. in our next segment. <laughs> they were very good. Four and five turnovers. What's on tap for Danny and Billy and his mates on the defensive side of the ball as Houston comes to town on Saturday? We'll examine that next on Sooner Game Day presented by Taco Mike. Oklahoma's defense, four fumble recoveries, two interceptions. They allowed 80 total yards in the first half. And it was a, a dominant performance against Temple coming in. And we'll see if they improve and what it looks like in week number two. But it was interesting, Brent Venables allowing new defensive coordinator Zach Alley to, to do the play calling. His first game doing that. What does that, number one, show you about the relationship between Zach Alley and Brent Venables, Gabe? Shows that Brent Venables has complete trust in Zach Alley and has complete trust that he can run the defense exactly the way that Brent Venables wants it to be run. I also think it shows maturity from Brent Venables and I think he believes him being more of a CEO style head coach is the best thing for Oklahoma football. 
you look at the most successful coaches mm -hmm. in college football over the last 10 years, Saban, Kirby, Dabo, they're all CEO style guys. Now Kirby and Saban, more of an influence on what those teams were doing defensively. I think that Brent Venables looks at that situation and goes, I can do that, still be heavily involved on the defense, but I need to spend more time with the guys on the offensive side of the ball, and I need to spend more time focused on special teams. I, I love the way that BV's going about it, Ted. Yeah, I think the best thing is his time management as a head coach. And, you know, having been out to some of the practices throughout training camp and, and in the spring, you can see that Previously, he was all in on the linebackers, basically running their individual drill. Uh, same thing in meetings. He was very heavily involved, almost like <laughs> at his old old job. But now, whenever Allie's there, he runs the whole show with linebackers. And Coach Venables, he bounces around to other different position groups. He's all over the field, you know, kind of weighing in on what's going on throughout. So I think it is much better. I think it helps the overall, as Gabe said, overall program and – I don't know. I, I think it helped the in-game management as well. It, it reminds me uh, of when I was playing and Venables was the defensive coordinator. I would go to him. I mean, he was widely considered as one of the best defense coordinators in the country. I would take situations that I was watching on film and just go ask him. Like, hey, what is the defense thinking here? Like, what should be going through sure. my head? And he'd walk me. Like, I learned a lot from Brent Venables I can't explain how valuable that is to have one of the top defensive minds in the sport, in your offensive meeting room, mm, mm -hmm. walking through, hey, when you do this, this is what I'm thinking. This is what the defense is thinking. This is what they're seeing. Mm -hmm. It just educates you so much more overall on the game of football. Now, you don't want to overload yourself with information, but being able to use him as a resource, as an offensive guy, is – incredibly valuable and now more of that time is available because of this setup that they have with Zach Alley as well yeah, absolutely perfect timing as well you got a lot of experience on the defensive side of the ball this year guys that have been in the system already two years so it's made the transition I'm sure easier for Zach Alley to step into this role on the field Teddy what'd you think of the defense what really stood out to you on Friday well I, I think the biggest thing was the interior defensive line uh, they looked really good you know we're big there we're super strong Jake Jackson for a true freshman, had an incredible game. Uh, you know, I expect those guys to continue to develop and get better and better. But for game one, I thought that really stood out. And then the other thing, and, and you just mentioned this, the experience on the defense. We've seen in the previous couple of years, at times, you know, Venables has said this, they saw more shift in motion last year than anyone in college football. And at times, and the reason is because at times, it looks like a fire drill. We're trying to get lined up. We got guys scrambling, pointing late to get to their, their coverage and their assignment. When you do that, you're going to see it week in, week out. Week one against Temple, you didn't see any of that. Everyone pointing, knowing where they're going to be. You saw Stutzman and, and Bowman, those guys directing traffic. We didn't have any large mental busts. There's mistakes in there, but we weren't turning guys free. We didn't mess up run fits to where we don't have a guy down a safety in the box that's supposed to be so to me that really stood out i like the idea of a fire drill when you were a kid you got to go outside <laughs> and take about 30 minutes out of school when it's happening on the field it does look Not a little so chaotic much. doesn't yeah. it let's talk about some of the guys individually who popped in this game grayson halton we mentioned him beginning of the show when a defensive lineman gets one of the top billings he must have flashed pretty good gabe was that your opinion yeah i thought that grayson halton looked great he went out there and did what I thought he would do. He was disruptive. Yeah. He was playing on the other side of the line of scrimmage and displayed some of the, the pass rush talent that we know he's got. But Holden was great. The guy that really flashed to me was Kendall Dolby mm. at that cheetah spot. He was lying around the football field. And I loved how he looked as a blitzer. He is coming a million miles an hour, still doing a nice job disguising it. And that is my favorite <laughs> player of the entire football game. He's upset game. he didn't get the pick. He was furious <laughs> at himself that he didn't pick that ball off, not knowing that Kanai Walker had it <laughs> going the other way. But that cheetah spot is so integral in this defensive scheme. 
and I thought he was really good in coverage. I thought he was great when he was brought into the run fit. I love the physicality he plays with, even though he's not the biggest guy. I just really, really liked what I saw from 15. Yep. Ted, who would you add to what you saw? Well, I thought the, the linebackers, for the most part, of course, did really well. I thought the young safeties came in, and, and uh, Hardy mm -hmm. looked great. Boganowski <laughs> is an absolute missile yeah. at safety. Um, you know, we saw some guys rotate through at the corner position. We've got depth, and, and it's something that we, we haven't had as much the last couple of years. And, you know, like the linebacker position, we probably saw five, six guys, you know, at least rotate through. Corner, we saw plenty of guys rotate through, may have more available this week. You know, if I had to nitpick anything, we had some coverage issues, small ones uh, at the backer spot, easy fixes, just, just small mistakes that you can improve on. And, you know, we're amped up. It's game one. Had a couple of flybys on some tackling, which that's going to happen. And, you know, in this game, they, it turned into turnovers because you got more guys rallying to mm -hmm. the football. But uh, if you're just going to nitpick, there were a couple of things in there. Okay, nitpick and, and areas of improvement your way, well, too. Well, I... I'm actually going to compliment them. I, I thought Kobe McKenzie played well. Great, yeah. And that that group at linebacker, when Kobe McKenzie comes in and plays that Mike Backer spot, I think it puts Stutzman at his best position in this defense. He, that will linebacker position, you may know a thing or two about this, Ted. That's the playmaker linebacker position in Brent Venables' defense. And that allows Stutzman to play in that spot. I, I think – Kip Lewis is an absolute playmaker when he's there and Stutzman's at the mic. But I like seeing Stutzman in that spot, and I think we're going to continue to see that rotation at linebacker. And I think that keeps those guys a little fresher, and it, it puts your playmakers in the playmaking position at linebacker. I think just something to add to that, and as an offensive lineman, I think you can speak to this. When you've got – like when Kip Lewis is out there, he's a speed guy. He's flying all over the place. And then Stutzman will play the will. They're different players. And I think you have to prepare a little bit differently. And it's difficult whenever you have Stutzman at the mic a little bit, then you have Stutzman at the will because they're, they're all a little bit different. And it makes it a little more uh, tough on the offensive coordinator trying to figure out exactly how we're going to game plan. These short, guys. Answer, short answer for him. Sorry, Ted. Where can the defense improve from week one to week two? Pass coverage, okay, some okay. pass coverage stuff, both man and zone. I mean, they dominated Temple, but yes, I, I think some of the underneath zone coverage, that's about the only thing you can say. You gave up three points. I mean, shut out. Well, I guess you could you could get a safety. Maybe that would be. An don't area. get don't get a personal foul for hitting a guy on the <laughs> okay. sideline. Maybe that's. Yeah, even we, though that was an awesome hit. We've gone way, way too far into the play. too far into the nitpicking. As far as Houston is concerned. Well, they're a work in progress, first year head coach. We'll talk about Willie Fritz's team and professional tees. We'll show you the Sooners throwback uniforms that they are going to wear on Saturday next on Sooner Game Day. It's about legacy at the University of Oklahoma. The throwback uniforms honoring the 47-game winning streak for Bud Wilkinson's Oklahoma team's longest in NCAA history. Beautiful uniforms, crimson with white numerals, the tri-stripe there, the Jordan logo, the SEC logo. I give it an A. I give it a thumbs up. How about you guys? I, I think it's awesome. We wore some similar to that in 2003. Uh -huh. and Coach Venables wouldn't commit to wearing the khakis and the – and the T-shirt when we talked to him at the Rudy show, okay. I'd like to see he that. He probably just didn't want to give it away. You mentioned 2003 and you wearing 
a similar uniform to that. I think we actually have some video oh, of that. Oh, look how Here grainy that is. Grainy. Oh, <laughs> look at 11. Kind of getting outside. The black cleats is the difference. I wonder if they're wearing the white or the black. Uh-oh, here comes 11. 11. You might want to block 11. Oh, <laughs> uh, look at that. The good just couldn't get days, there, right? though, Ted, huh? Not fast enough. Just a step slow. <laughs> nope, just not even worry about pass coverage. You just send all the back. That's exactly what Gabe said. Every drop you back. Said, we we're just abandoning coverage responsibilities. <laughs> no. We're going and hitting QBs, baby. We got an offensive lineman catching the ball. <laughs> oh, D straight. Derek straight, yeah. He looks pretty Gosh, good in whatever look, uniform you put good. him in. They look Those good. look good. Jason White. What's the oh, at this game, by the way? They're all wet, though, so they're a little darker. Is that going to affect it at all? It was a little rainy. I was 12 years old. 37 3, 2003 Sooners over North Texas. No names on the back of the uniforms. That's a throwback as well. Doesn't happen for real. I, I don't mind it. If another team did it, I'd be really annoyed. <laughs> I don't mind it because we know our guys. Like yeah, we know, right. we know all of them. I'm not worried about identifying anyone on Oklahoma's football team. You just got to get plank and get the roster there in case you have any questions well, I think, about it. I think if you took the numbers off the jerseys, yeah, we could still identify everyone. You've seen them enough. You've I seen think we could identify them by body type the they and, move. and yep. movement patterns. Let's talk about the Houston Cougars a little bit. Second season in the Big Twelve. Picked 15th out of the now 16 teams that are in the Big 12 Conference. Dana Holgerson out as head coach. Willie Fritz is in. Great track record. Obviously, we know all about him from his days at Tulane. The scoop is presented by Brahms Ice Cream and Dairy Stores Farm Fresh for over 50 years. We know Donovan Smith is a familiar face. He actually threw for a touchdown and an interception and 192 yards against Oklahoma back in 2021. So give us the scoop on this version of the Houston Cougars game. I would not pay attention to Donovan Smith's stats in their opener against UNLV. Guy never had a chance. Tough to evaluate. You know, he had, he had labrum surgery on his throwing arm in the offseason. Well, his offensive line should try to protect him better. He didn't have to use it. <laughs> he was running for his life for this entire football game. They didn't get much going in the run game. The offense really, really struggled. I expect them to be a little bit better because, honestly, they can't be much worse than they were against UNLV. We'll see. I think Oklahoma's defense is going to look at this game and go, let's pad some stats, boys. Let's fly around, rack these tackles for, tackle for loss numbers up, rack some sacks up. But defensively, I, I think they look solid. I think this is, this is by far the best defense that Oklahoma will have played this season, which – you're only on game two, but you have to take care of their defensive line. They've got some guys that would that would be at bigger programs if they were just a couple inches taller. Yeah, Keith Cooper is one of those guys defensively. He's he tall. Was, he was at Tulane with Willie Fritz. He comes to Houston. Does he stand out when you watch the film, Teddy? Yeah, the defense is the strength of the team right now. There's no doubt they're ahead of the offense, and I think that's going to continue to be the case. You know, Willie Fritz – the Tulane defense that he had was really good, and they got some talent in there, and I expect the same thing with Houston. And, you know, I, I think they're going to, like, when you talk about their offense, I think they're going to use our aggressiveness because you know our defensive line, our front seven, are licking their chops. I think they're going to try and screen us. You saw plenty of screens from them in their first game against UNLV. I, I expect that as well. But, you know, their defensive line, it's it's going to be a challenge for us. It's it's a much better challenge than Temple was, so we're going to have to step up our game. All right, you mentioned the screen game. I would imagine between kind of speed sweep and jet sweep mm -hmm. concepts and this just screens to the outside, I would anticipate somewhere between like 10 and 15 of those. Got to get the ball out quick. Mm -hmm. Got to get it away from the, the teeth and the strength of OU's defense. With how... Poorly their offensive line played in week one. They know they're just not going to be able to hold up up front. And so they're, they're going to try to do some things on the outside just to get away from the teeth of Oklahoma's defense. What would give you the most pleasure on Saturday night? It is hmm. presented by Chick-fil-A. Download the Chick-fil-A app and order ahead. You can save time waiting when you pick up your favorite Chick-fil-A food. What would give you the most pleasure on Saturday night, Teddy? Explosive runs. Okay. We've got to run the football better. We, we got to win the line of scrimmage. You know, I, I, we've talked about this. I expect maybe some different personnel packages. I expect maybe 
you know, some different concepts to attack a little bit differently, but we got to be able to win the line of scrimmage. We, we've got to be able to get these backs going. And, you know, I thought there were several times in week one where it was blocked up pretty good. We've got the running back is on, you know, the final player that they've got to run over, run through, or make miss. And we just got, we got the ankle pick and, and we weren't able to turn it into an explosive run. We got to be able to win on those. So I expect that to be better from the running backs as well. We should be able to run the ball well over 200 yards, 250, maybe even the 300 mark if we really dedicate to it. All right. How about you? What would give you the most pleasure on Saturday night, Gabe? Since Ted took the rushing attack, I just want to see the personnel groupings. Mm -hmm. I really liked some of the things I saw with Jake Roberts and Bauer Sharp both on the field. And I think those guys can be better as blockers. I, I think both of those guys were really – amped up in the opener and kind of, I don't want to say the environment overwhelmed them, but I do think it affected the way that they played. I want to see more of that 12 personnel with both of those guys out there on the field. And I want to see more 21 mm -hmm. with two running backs on the field. I really liked some of the things we saw, especially with Tatum and Barnes in the backfield together. And I think there's a chance. 13 personnel, Ooh. three tight ends. Mm. King on the Helms, football, maybe? I, I think the staff really likes what they're seeing from Cade McIntyre. Yeah. I think he has been practicing at a very high level. He had a lot of good snaps in the opener. I, I think you're going to, we may see them both, McIntyre and Helms, but I think 13 personnel is coming our way, and I'm going to have a big smile on my face. You may in, in those, I, may, I may faint. In those throwback uniforms, <laughs> oh. three tight ends, putting oh. their hands in the ground. Oh. I like it. Look for that. That's my pleasure presented by Chick-fil-A. Up next, we're making some picks and recapping the week that was in college football last week. Sooner Game Day is brought to you by Bud Light. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. OU Health, proud to be Oklahoma's flagship academic health system. The best place to gear up for game day is shop.soonersports.com. Log on to Soonersports.com slash kids for information about joining the Sooner Junior Kids Club presented by og and &E, and brought to you in part by Orthodontics Exclusively, Mathis Home, and Devon Energy. Time for your NCAA update presented by Taco Mayo. Big appetite, bigger savings. Download and save today the national landscape. Georgia looked good, although that was a 6-0 game at halftime with Clemson. Georgia ran away. 0-2 now for Florida State. Mm. USC, big win over LSU. And uh, that's, that graphic's letting Florida off the hook a little bit. What were, you, what were your primary thoughts last week, Gabe? I think that Clemson is no longer on the top tier of college football because of their roster building strategy and Georgia just looks like a wagon mm -hmm. they look fantastic Cam Ward may be the best player in college football already he was excellent for he Miami was, he was an incarnate word in San Antonio about I, four I don't years care ago. where he was that guy can <laughs> play somebody missed on the recruiting rankings on Cam Ward it appears they embarrassed Florida. Teddy how about you yeah I mean kind of the same thing on Clemson I will say though and you mentioned it was it was close going into halftime. I, Georgia, I still feel like, is head and shoulders above the rest. Mm -hmm. So it does get a little bit difficult to evaluate. But, I mean, that conference is all of a sudden really interesting with some of the teams that we've seen play in Florida State. 0-2 in conference Miami's play. the best team in that league right now. It, yeah. cer it certainly would appear. All right, time for our pick em update from last week. The results were... Woo, not great for any of us. I'll take three out of five Look when you guys Chad. only get two. Nice Teddy guy. always does this, though. He slow plays it. Rope and then he comes on week strong. one. He's a finisher. It it's is week, week one. one. Pick'em is presented, as always, by our friends at Riverwind Casino. Texas, Michigan, it comes down to me that Texas, they've got the coach and the quarterback stability with yours and Sarkeesian and new at quarterback and coach for Michigan. That's why I'm taking Texas in this one. How about you, Ted? I'm taking Michigan. It's a line of scrimmage sport. What I've seen right now is Michigan's better on both sides of the ball on the line of scrimmage. Now, it's a clash of styles. I think whoever can force the other team into their style of play ultimately is going to win it. And to me, I think Michigan 
going to drag him into the deep water. All right, we got to go fast here, Gabe. Give me, reluctantly, give me Texas. I just <laughs> think they can. I think they can produce some more explosive plays offensively. Nico. Ia Maleava. He is Josh Heupel's quarterback at Tennessee. Looked good in week one. They've got North Carolina State this week. Who are you picking, Gabe? I'm taking Tennessee. I just don't think Grayson McCall and that NC State offense can keep pace with the Vols. I just don't think they're explosive enough. It's a better test. We'll see what flaws, if any, Tennessee has, but I'm taking Tennessee. Tennessee as well. Nico Ia Maleava. Get Ia Maleava. Ia Maleava. Very well said. That Toby Rowland, the voice of the Sooners, will get through that, I'm <laughs> sure, quite easily. Arkansas, Oklahoma State. Ollie Gordon looked pretty good for Oklahoma State in week one. What do you think this one, Ted? Yeah, I'm taking Oklahoma State. I, I, they've got so much experience on that football team. They're going to have the best player on the field. Give me OSU. I'm the same. Give me the Cowboys. I agree. South Carolina, Kentucky. You got to look ahead. Potentially Kentucky next week. South Carolina wasn't great against Old Dominion. Who are you taking, Gabe? Did you see that freshman for South Carolina? Yeah, I don't care who wins the game. I just want to watch that. I just want to watch number six with six, Dylan six, Stewart. I'm taking Kentucky. Who are you picking? I'm taking Kentucky at Same. home. Yeah, give me give me the Wildcats. Colorado, Nebraska. Watching Temple last week reminded me just how good a coach Matt Rule is to get Temple to ten wins. I'm taking Nebraska in this game, Gabe. I like Nebraska big. I think that defense yeah. is the difference. They haven't been able to get past games like this in the past. True. This is going to be a, like a big moment for them if they can get this win. If they can just avoid the hilarious mistakes that have cost Absolute them games. Absolute meltdowns That's in the, the second I don't half. think they should be He will come unglued if something got, like that Got to have a plan for Travis Hunter. Good yeah. point. And Sanders plan. for that matter. Got to defend both those guys. Up next, Sooners in the NFL. We saw uh, Patrick Mahomes. We saw Samaje Pirine as a Kansas City Chief on opening night. We'll reflect upon that next on Sooner Game Day. Sooner Game Day is brought to you by Riverwind Casino. Good times, great rewards. Coca-Cola. Is Coke Zero the best Coke ever? Take a test. OG&E. We energize life. The Sooner Sports Podcast is your all-access audio pass to Sooner Sports. Listen as Toby Rowland and Chris Plank talk all things Sooners. New episodes drop every day. Log on to Soonersports.com slash podcast or search Sooner Sports Podcast in your favorite podcast provider. Presented by Allstate and Riverwind Casino. Thank you to our Cornerstone Television partners, OU Health, og and &E, Fowler Auto Group, and Coca-Cola. 6.45 kickoff Oklahoma-Houston on SEC Network on Saturday night as we wrap up Sooner Game Day and we talk about Sooners in the NFL. Ravens and Chiefs on opening night, probably the, the two NFL teams who have had the most former Sooners on their rosters in recent days. Samaj P. Ryan is now a Chief. Creed Humphrey helping clear the way for him. So that could be a repeat of the AFC Championship game very easily. Who are you guys' Super Bowl picks? Uh, the Chiefs are going to make it again. Um, but no one can stop them. That's fine. And I think the 49ers are still the best team in the NFC. I'd like to see Detroit make it, but yeah. probably going to be Chiefs Niners. That's who I'm taking. Give me, give me the Lions and give me the – you can't pick anyone but the Chiefs. Hot right? takes are presented by Air Comfort Solutions, your total home solution for plumbing, heating, air conditioning, and electrical. Hot take from Saturday. What's it going to be? Bauer Sharp, over 100 yards. I, I don't think – I don't think Houston's very good in the middle of the field. Tap three more touchdowns for Burks. I like that idea. Mm. Sooner fans would be happy with that. 645 SEC Network Saturday. For Ted Lehman, Gabe Eichert, I'm Chad McKee. See you next week on Sooner Game Day.